Uh, all right, guys, uh, let's move last into our segment we call Jedi Options. And this is one of my favorite things we do each week here on the Halftime Report. You know, each day we have different things that we design, you know, with coach Emily, we hold the Queens court, you know, and I love that. And we have a lot of fun with that. Coach Frank brings his charts, coach Greg, uh, we play buy one, hold one, dump one. But on Wednesday, we get to dive into the, you know, lab a little bit. We get to go into the risk graphs, into the trade tab, into the option analytics, like the implied volatility and the deltas and the gammas and the Vegas through the Greeks and look at different strategies and different ways to play things. And coach Tyler is the perfect coach here as the architect of many option trading systems. Uh, to lead Jedi options here today. Uh, Coach Ty, what you got for us today uh, on these two breakout candidates? Yeah, so as you mentioned, I, I got a pair of breakouts, a couple of breakout trades. Uh, we're going to look at Costco and Tesla. So I'll break down the technical pattern, why I think they're interesting. Uh, and then we're going to look at the different volatility characteristics of Costco, Costco versus Tesla. These are two very, very different uh, stocks, two very different stocks. And I'm going to show how that translates into the option pricing. Uh, and it's going to maybe determine the different option strategies we're going to pick. So uh, we'll start with Costco. Costco was on our options report this week. It is Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. You go back to when it, we put it on the list. R remember, if you want to get good at identifying breakouts beforehand, everybody can spot them afterwards. Oh, Costco broke out. Oh, Tesla broke out. Um, and that's fine. But, but in reality, I wanna have the trade set up ahead of time. So what you have to do is you have to go back in time and say, what did Costco look like before the breakout? That is the pattern that you need to get good at identifying so that you're there, you're ready to pounce uh, when and if it triggers. And so, in this case, we didn't know if Costco was going to break out this week. We just knew it was prime. We knew it was close. So you put it on the radar. It has a pop on Monday, you know, just on the doorstep of a breakout. And then yesterday it finally popped. And, and I think really regardless of, of what time frame you look at this, I, I think it's fair to say we can all agree it's it's a breakout. Mm -hmm. You look at the, the weekly chart and it's even more clean, right? It's just very high tight base kind of a cup and handle pattern than, than, than the breakout. So it's triggered. So, so that's the Costco pattern. Now, the other area that is, is in play recently, we, we talked about growth stocks, picking up the slack. Two, two charts, I think, illustrate that. So we already looked at the NASDAQ, but, but take a look at the ARC Innovation ETF. This, as I think we've mentioned before, pretty good proxy for how the market feels about growth. They loved it going up to February. Growth had a massive uh, fallout from February to, to May. And now you can see over the past couple of weeks, this is back above all the moving averages, just quietly reversing back into an uptrend. And, and you can see today in particular, this thing is at the high of the day, up almost 2% when the S&P is flat, when the NASDAQ is flat. So you're seeing some, some short-term relative strength accompanying this recent trend reversal. Tesla, one of the, the biggest holdings of ARC, is waking up today. Um, the first time I think bullish trades have been interesting on Tesla in a couple of months. And uh, Matt was mentioning pre-show, this pattern actually looks similar to the Apple pattern uh, that we highlighted a couple of weeks ago, which I'll show you here in just a second. But in terms of the setup going into the breakout, we didn't have Tesla on uh, the radar primarily because it, it hadn't yet given us a reason to. Um, yes, it could have broken out, but there was still some work to be done. Well, things have developed a little more since last Friday. And now what you have is a nice little, you can call it an ascending triangle, a little bit of a symmetrical triangle. But either way, we're breaking out of this, this volatility compression pattern. Uh, first breakout you've seen since the one in April. Now, the one in April ultimately failed. You, you're coming at this breakout, I think, with a better pattern than you were back then. So I've got, I've got higher hopes for this one. But there's no denying this is what people have been waiting for on Tesla. You're simultaneously taking out the 50-day moving average. So, so that is the second um, pattern that we're going to be playing with here. And then to show you the Apple a comparison, we talked about this little Apple volatility compression two weeks ago. 
and it had a breakout over the 50 day and has continued higher since sure. that is the type of follow through you're hoping to get on test. Well, and one of the things that grabbed my attention when we were discussing, you know, uh, Jedi options here for today uh, with these two different companies and, and is that Costco and Tesla have very good breakouts on both of them, but they're different patterns, but they're also different, very different implied volatility conditions on the different companies. Uh, if you give me an IV uh, graph on the bottom, I know that uh, IV is a very important part of what you do. They're both at the low of their own personal volatility ranges, right? Uh, but Tesla's implied volatility and Costco's implied volatility are real different ranges raw numbers when you look at them. Tesla's yep. trading, I believe, uh, I was looking at just a second ago, like 62% implied volatility on their average, where yep. Costco only trades at like 18% volatility. So technical breakdowns are technical breakouts, right? But the implied volatility underneath it can change the way you approach it in the options market. Both could be viable buys on long calls. Absolutely. But there might be something else you can do with Tesla because of the higher print. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, that implied volatility implication here, Tyler, as you're looking at two different breakouts. Yeah, I I'm glad you brought that up. So what's interesting about this is at first blush, your, your takeaway may be similar in the sense that Costco has an IV rank of the you know, four, the fourth percentile. So it is at the lower end of its range to Tim's point. And, and so is Tesla's. The IV rank is seven, meaning it's again at the lower end of its one year range. So at first blush, if you just look at the IV rank, you'd say, oh, options are cheap. So I wanna buy options in some fashion. I wanna buy calls or a call spread. Uh, and that's true. But when you go one step further and you say, well, what is the actual uh, absolute volatility number? Yes, yeah, 62 on Tesla, 18 on Costco night and day difference, night and day difference. So even though Tesla's at the lower end of its range, its general volatility is still quite high, which is going to translate into very pricey call options. Now they're not as pricey as maybe they could be. They're still pricey, they're still pricey. Um, I'll get to Tesla here in a second, but I wanna, I wanna look at Costco first so you can kind of have a comparison here. So if I wanted to buy a call, and, and remember that we're dealing with expensive stocks to begin with, you know, Costco's 392 bucks, Tesla's $652. So you just know already right off the bat, the calls are going to be priced a little bit higher by virtue of the uh, expensive underlying uh, share price. Even still though, Costco, if, if I go out to August, maybe a two month call option, Costco's at 392. I just buy maybe the half the money. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and go first strike out to try to make it a little cheaper. $9 is not all that expensive for a $400 stock. You know, percentage wise, if you pay nine bucks, stock is $392. You're paying about 2.3% of the stock price for the call option. So 900 bucks may seem expensive, but when you, you price it versus as a percentage of the underlying uh, stock, it's, it's not that bad. In comparison, a Tesla, if I go buy the first call option, uh, kind of first break out of the money, you're paying $53.70, which as a percentage of the stock price is about 8%. So 2% of the underlying price for a call option on Costco four times that amount, 8% on Tesla, mm -hmm. which is what Tim alluded to earlier, that makes buying calls on Tesla pretty tricky. Uh, you're putting up almost, you know, almost $5,500. Even with a decent stop loss, Tim, I'm probably down a couple of grand at, 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 at a minimum if this call goes against me. And so I think I could get away with buying a call option on Costco I think of necessity, I'm going to have to do some kind of spread on, on Tesla. Notwithstanding the low IV, I'm still going to have to do a spread to make the cost uh, palatable. Well, and if you go back to the chart here real quick, I mean, if you were ever going to say it's a good time to buy calls on Tesla, you could make that argument now. So, yep. I mean, uh, we are pre-earnings, right? It's going to have a, a nice IV build into earnings. We're near the lower end of the IV rank, uh, but just understanding not only IV rank, but raw implied volatility percentages can really help you understand what you're paying for those derivative contracts, which we call options, right? And I'm glad that you did both of them first out of the money. So there was some consistency there, uh, but 
Costco, obviously, you know, uh, is going to be a much, much lower cost <clears throat> relative to the stock price, just because it's not, it's not the same kind of company. Remember, options are a reflection of that company's risk or the assessment of the market, uh, you know, in terms of interpreting that company's risk moving forward. So yeah, you're going to pay more for Tesla. You're going to pay less for Costco. It changes the way you would approach it, even if you want to play them both Delta based, which is what breakouts kind of allude to, right, Ty? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and so to build out the, uh, so to build out the Tesla spread, all you, you don't have to do anything fancy here, right? Like, like you don't have to get crazy and doing some kind of diagonal spread or, or complicated butterfly. It could be as simple as saying, look, I, I just want to make this call option cheaper. That's all. I, I like a directional play here. I like the breakout, but I can't afford this 5,400 bucks. So all you have to do is decide what can you afford? How much are you willing to put into this? If you just focus on the cost, it actually makes the decision easier than even getting complicated with what's my net delta, what's my theta, what's my vega. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even think that we need to go that route. You can just say, look, if you bought the 655 at a minimum, Tim, I mean, you can mm -hmm. sell the 660. Now, I don't think anybody would ever do a $5 white spread here, but, but let's just prove the point. If I just sell the very next strike, I just took the cost from $5,400 to 235 bucks, right? So I don't have to be scared. I don't have to be deterred by the fact that Tesla's a $650 beast. Shoot, I just built a call spread for 200 bucks, right? Now, $5 wide spread, probably way too tight on something like Tesla, uh, but you know, you could. So I would just kind of widen this out. Do I want to do a, a $10 spread for four and a half dollars? Do I want to do a, a uh, you know, 20 point spread for nine bucks? You can kind of find, so right there, I actually tend to make it Let's keep it. Out. I was just thinking the same thing. Let's keep it yeah. right there. Cause then the cost is going to be the, the same uh, relative uh, for both of them. Yeah. 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 So, so the long call for nine bucks on Costco or the 20 point wide call spread for uh, Tesla, both trading around $9. Now I can really say, look, cost wise, the same. I can make the risk the same. Maybe just which chart do I like better? Do I like the higher octane, more volatile behavior of a Tesla? Or do I like the slower, steadier nature of, of a Costco? Um, I mean, th there is a difference in the sense that the Costco long call has unlimited profit potential, uh, but maybe I'm not expecting fireworks from, from mm -hmm. Costco. So I'm not expecting to triple my money anyways. Tesla, I'm limiting my profit potential because it's a spread. It's a 20 point spread. When I only paid nine bucks, I can still double my money on the Tesla trade. So it's not insignificant. It's not insignificant. I agree. You know, and I like that we're looking at this uh, from a relative cost perspective on the same way. And now I'm looking at the charts, thinking about targeting and all that kind of stuff. It's got my brain now moving here, Tyler. I like uh, the conversation. Maybe we can look at the risk graph and kind of just model, okay, now that we've got the cost where they are, what would be the, the relative profits or losses if they do make a, a small move up or down on these two different trades and kind of compare them? Uh, can you do that for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so looking at Tesla, like what would be a potential target, I would look at a couple of things. So, so the first thing is this stock moves about 20 bucks a day, okay? It's up $30 today. So, so you're up one and a half ATRs today. So today is a, a substantial move, higher, uh, more movement than, than usual with Tesla. But, but the point is, if you're gonna target 20, 40 bucks away, that's not outlandish, right? Uh, you, this is at 650, could it go 6, 670, you know, 700? I think completely doable. For, from a support and resistance perspective, the next major resistance is up at 775, but that's probably a bit optimistic. That would be like maybe a, a, a T2, a, a second target. Initial target here, I don't know, Tim, I, I just kind of gravitate to the whole number around 700 bucks, mm -hmm. uh, I think is a realistic first target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's definitely realistic within pay ranges and volatility expectations for Tesla. I mean, it's only going to be what a forty-six dollar move from here, uh, which is a, a nice percentage move, but it's a couple ATR, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So a two ATR move on Tesla, what does that uh, do for us? So it translates if, if so if I get there immediately, okay, I'm making about two hundred sixty bucks. Okay, so two sixty, I had to pay about nine hundred. It's mm -hmm. about a thirty percent return. But 
the trade gets better as time passes. Once you're above that 675, the higher strike, or even when you're just closer to the higher strike than the lower strike, it becomes a, a, a bit of a cash flow play. So if this gets to 700, but a few weeks go by, then you're going to see the profit sweetens a bit, right? My profit's going to creep higher as time passes. Um, so 260 plus would be the uh, profit target if this thing takes off to 700. And the inverse is true if it doesn't work, by the way. It actually gets worse over time. That's where that you look at the risk graph here. Profitable debit spreads, you know, actually time benefits them. But if it moves against you, say one or two ATR to the downside, you know, we're at 657 right now, down 20 bucks. Uh, that loss actually is going to expand as time passes. So you don't want to real, really be patient uh, with debit spreads where the technical charts uh, just absolutely blow you out of the water if it does not work out, right? So you kind of want to have a plan in place on both sides of that yeah correct and i think the chart pattern lends itself to um you know pretty easy uh decision on where to put your stop right the premise is tesla's breaking out w what would have to happen for that premise to be wrong well i don't know about you but i think we could say definitively if this thing breaks back below 608 it came back into the triangle and then yeah. it broke the lower end of the triangle like like you, you were wrong okay so 608 and now I think that's a, a loose stop. You know, you're risking about a third. You paid 900 bucks. You're risking about 300. Mm -hmm. Not sure I need to let it go much further than that if it, if it uh, goes in the wrong direction. Yeah. So at T1 versus your stop, you're pretty close to one to one reward to risk. So you'd be looking at a T2 to really hit a nice profit here on Tesla, which yep. is the nature of a bull call spread. Quite frankly, there's a lot of times you could be patient with them. Uh, what about Costco? I mean, if we we're going to go the long call route, looking at maybe a two ATR move to the upside so that we have consistency because Tesla can move 8%, right? But you know, Costco is not going to move 8% in the same fashion Tesla is. Uh, so what would our profit loss expectation be looking like on Costco here with the long call? Yeah, so ATR is five bucks. So two ATRs would be about ten dollars. It's at three ninety two. So you're looking around four oh two as mm -hmm. as kind of a two ATR profit. And then I would just model out that long call we were looking at. So I'm, I'm going out to August, couple of months. Uh, and and you know the assumption here, I'm going for a couple ATRs. I'm not going for you know ten ATRs. Then we need to buy a six month call, I think, to try to go for a two ATR move, right? So, so the assumption here is that August gives us sufficient time, uh, not going to hit us as hard with the time decay as, as a July would, but buying buy that AUG 395, midpoint's about 890. So again, right around the $9 price. If you take a look at the risk graph, you know, big difference with this guy is you do have unlimited uh, potential profit, uh, you know, with the understanding that we're talking about Costco here, we're not talking about Bitcoin. Uh, so if I look at, got to take the time back to today. So if this thing pops to about four, what I say, 402, you're looking at about a $500 uh, dollar profit, mm -hmm. which is over 50%, mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense. The, the bull call spread is a more conservative trade, uh, getting a 30% return on a two ATR move, the long call on Costco, the more aggressive trade, getting about a 50 plus percent return, uh, which kind of lines up with what we understand about these two strategies. Yeah. Yeah. And then on the loss side, I mean, if we take one or two ATR to the downside, you're obviously going to see, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that loss come in as well. Where would a stop out be here on Costco? So we can model that a little bit. Yeah, so so same same thought process, right? My premise was it's a breakout. What invalidates the breakout? Mm -hmm. Well, certainly uh, I would not let this get below maybe 380, 379, somewhere around there. It's not only come back into the breakout zone, it's broken to, to the downside. So let's call it 379. And you can see you're risking about the same. So mm -hmm. shares that one to one on a on a two ATR versus decent stop loss. Uh, it's just the percentages are higher, but it's the it's the the more aggressive play of the two. Sure. All right. I love it. I uh, appreciate the breakdown there, Tyler. And obviously both technical breakouts are valid. And one of the things I like about Jedi options is a teaching segment we're doing here on Wednesdays. It allows us to kind of dig into even some of the most subtle things, like the difference between a bull call and a long call on two different patterns uh, because of the characteristics of their volatility. So I appreciate that analysis and that breakdown right there, uh, Tyler. That's great. Uh, let's bring uh, coach Matt back in here as we start moving uh, towards the end of the show. Uh, Matt, do you, uh, any uh, thoughts just on Costco and uh, Tesla? 
was uh, Tyler and I were uh, discussing it. Yeah, pretty simple, straightforward no, breakout. No, yeah, yeah, honestly, whenever I get a chance to sit down and listen to Tyler talk about options, I just enjoy it. I just enjoy the breakdown. I enjoy the uh, the quality of the analysis. I I enjoy the the going from point A to point Z instead of just here's a trade. Oh my goodness, look at this hype mm-hmm. it, hype it. it. Like I hate that stuff. I like detail. I like analysis. I like the in-depth type uh, type conversations. I'm not the dude that loves three-minute videos. I'm the dude that loves to geek out over a three-hour concept, right? Mm-hmm. I, and so I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it and just wanted to say thank you more than anything.